It's Mr. Morosi. As you can imagine, we're a little excited here this morning. Well, you should be. Uh, this is now uh, one of the bigger wins we have seen the Jays have uh, in their franchise's history. That's a winner-take-all game. And uh, I thought it was interesting, uh, MLB Network had the note last night that that was the first walk-off home run in a winner-take-all postseason game since Aaron Boone in Game 7 mm. of the 3 ALCS. So that was that was legitimate genuine baseball history last night and certainly uh, because in part of the uh, decisions by Buck Showalter, a game we will all be talking about uh, really for years to come. This isn't, well, I don't know, John. You know, is this Grady Little leaving Pedro in? Great question. Uh, to me, Jeff, it's, it's worse than that because at least at the time, Grady Little could have told you Pedro Martinez is my best and he stayed with his best someone who was obviously still close to, if not at the the peak of his powers. Uh, In this instance, last night, the Baltimore Orioles threw 151 pitches, and not one of them was thrown by the best relief pitcher in baseball Mm. in a game that ended their season. So however one wants to rationalize that, that is a very difficult piece of information, I'm sure, for Orioles fans and and for the Orioles organization to overcome today because uh, they had someone there capable of of really extending the game, and especially, guys, when you think about it, and and, uh, our our friend John Lowe made this point to me uh, last night as well, thinking about this, the top of the Baltimore order was up in the very next inning. Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, that would have been the time to bring in Britain to, to pitch the 11th, because if you do that, then uh, you you would hope to to shut down the Jays in the bottom of that inning, and then you think that of all the possibilities, you've got a decent chance to take the lead in the top, and then Britain could throw two innings, which he has done by the way this year. He actually has done that against the Blue Jays this year, mm-hmm. throw two innings. Um, so he could throw two innings, being the the, the inning that uh, that ultimately ended the game. You would throw that inning and face the top of the Jays lineup then let your top of the lineup bat in the top of the next inning, and then the Orioles would have hoped then he could have closed it out with a two-inning outing, which, again, he has done at least once. Well, and you know, and you don't think, John, and even if that doesn't work out, right? So let's say they, they don't go in and take the lead, and so Britain throws two innings and you're into, the what, the 13th inning or something. It's not like a regular season game in the sense that, oh, okay, at some point a position player is going to come up here and have to pitch, right? The, the, the way the rosters are set up for the wild card, He's got lots of options, right? If, if this game goes 20 innings, he's got guys. It's it's not all or nothing um, at that point. And, you know, that's kind of as, you know, when you heard him afterwards kind of rash like as well, you know, we might have had to do this and we might have had to do that. But, you know, Dylan Bundy's in the in the, in the the bullpen, right? He can throw some innings for you. Uh, you know, if you didn't go to Jimenez there, you've, you've, got, you've got all kinds of options specific to the wild card game and specific to the way the roster is set up. And he managed it like it was a, game in the middle of the season correct i agree Stephen. and and again you contrast that with the way john gibbons manages ball club and john was more aggressive now obviously uh osuna leaves with the with the shoulder tenderness or tightness or whatever it's uh, being described as um so there there was maybe that consequence of it but overall john gibbons put his best relievers in in the highest leverage situations and certainly be was so big earlier in the game and then he also had liriano and also to be fair Liriano just came out there with better stuff than Jimenez. Oh yeah, uh, the, Toronto's long guy was was the more effective relief pitcher clearly than Baltimore's long guy. Just had the better stuff. The, the interesting thing about about the the bases the loading the bases conversation, Stephen, which I think is an interesting one. Um, the, the one counter argument to to playing it the way that Buck played it again once he had made the decision to put Jimenez in the game, which we all didn't agree with, but once Jimenez was in there. He is someone who has had a track record of walks. Mm -hmm. And I I think you want to give someone like that a little bit of wiggle room. I realize the matchup against Bautista would have been better, but frankly, he probably would have had to retire him at some point in time anyway. So you look at the big picture there. I don't have as big of an issue once he was in the moment with him not loading the bases on on that intentional walk just because um, I wouldn't have wanted to put Jimenez in that situation. But clearly, uh, at that time, Stephen, they were choosing among uh, uh, less-than-ideal options.